What's actually going on when we're doing wide open power runs on the dyno? What are we monitoring and what are we changing to achieve horsepower? Let's find out. In my mind, this video needs to go for about an hour for me to fully and thoroughly cover what I'm trying to talk about, but I'm really gonna just try and touch on this as quick as possible so you guys get a pretty good overview of what goes on. So as we do a wide open run on the dyno, we are monitoring the air fuel ratio. Now the dyno has a, a couple of ways of doing that and so does the tuning software, but the most basic way is, hopefully you can see here in a minute, I'll walk you through in a minute, but uh, there's a couple of, actually we'll just go down the back and I'll show you. The lighting's a bit terrible in here, so just bear with me. I'll turn this around. So at the back of the dyno here, we have our air fuel ratio block. Now this guy here has two O2 sensors on it, one for the front and one for the rear cylinder. Now these tubes here come out and come into these flexible bits of pipe. Now these guys can bend. You know, we can put bends in that quite easy if we need to put it into an exhaust system and bend it around a few corners. Now that obviously goes up into the exhaust system of the bike and we can sniff, essentially, the O2 sensors will sniff the AFR of the motorcycle when we do a wide open run. And that will be reflected on the graph up there, we'll take a look at it in a minute. But another way, that is not the most accurate way to do it. That is the easiest, quickest way to do it. It works great on some shorter exhaust systems that are very short and don't have weird shapes in them that we can sort of, as you push those up into the bike, they will bend and go around the corner slightly. So they get pretty close. That is a pretty easy, well, it's a very easy way to do it. A more accurate way to do it is to get our wide band O2 sensor as close to the exhaust port as possible. So the way we do that, we remove the heat shields from the exhaust system. We drill a hole in the header pipe, obviously a few drill bits, and then we install these huck rivets. These are basically just a big pop rivet with a thread in them that we install our O2 sensor blocks, these guys here. So we fit that to the header pipe. That has a screw or a, a bolt with a hole in it. Hopefully you can see that. That allows the gas to pass through the bolt into the O2 sensor block and onto the O2 sensor. Now we can run that directly. We can plug that in down here and the Dynajet software will monitor it. Computer's up there and it will feed it up into our monitor and that's where we see those, well the screens have just come on, but that's where we see our graph. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is exactly the same way we mounted it. We run the Techno Research wideband kit that will, this monitoring system here, it works in conjunction with the Techno Research software and you can set up to do auto-tune so it will make changes to your VEs uh, accordingly. Okay, so once we complete a wide open run on the dyno, well we can see, starting out we have three graphs here. This is our horsepower and torque at the top, front cylinder AFR and rear cylinder AFR. Now you can see this is very squiggly, it's all over the place, doesn't look the greatest. As a basic general rule, we want to get that as flat as possible here. If you can see, hopefully you can see this dashed line here. That represents 13 to 1. That is a pretty good base point to start from. That's where my fuel cheat table over there corrects back to. So if I want to make changes to the AFR readings I have here, I can get, refer back to that graph just there and increase the fuel or decrease the fuel accordingly to get my target of 13 to 1. Now, we can see here, if I open the tuning software here and show you, we have front and rear cylinder here. Front cylinder, rear cylinder. Okay, so we're just going to open the front cylinder and show you guys a look at the front VE fuel table. Now, let me just make this a little bigger so you can see. All right, so you can see here, it's quite rich here. At 2,000 RPM, we're at about 10 to 1. So 10.3 to one it is at 2000 RPM. Now what that looks like over here on our VE table, 2000 RPM, and remember we did this run, that run was done at wide open throttle. So we've got throttle position across the top of this table. So 100% throttle, 2000 RPM, that puts us, where's my mouse gone? That puts us here at this cell block here, so 99. That 99 represents a percentage of fill in the cylinder. So how much air is in the cylinder, 99%. 
Now that is obviously just a guide for the ECM to calculate how long to open the fuel injector to achieve our target air fuel ratio that we set here. In this case, this is just an example table guys, but you can see here we have our RPM axis over here and manifold absolute pressure here. So 20 map right up to 100 map or atmospheric pressure. So you can see this guy set here at 12.9 to one. At wide open throttle, we're generally not seeing 100 map, we're seeing just under that. So both of these columns are set to the same, uh, tell, uh, the same values to reduce any interpolation. So that is a, this table is set based on experience and what we're actually trying to achieve per bike, per combo. So in this case, we've got a target here. The ECM knows a target of 12.9. So then it goes, all right, well, I need to, I've got a percentage fill of 99. I need to hold the injector open for X amount of milliseconds to achieve this target. So we go, okay, let's see what's going on. We do a run on the dyno and we go, hang on a minute, we're way lean here. We're at third, at, well, let's use 3000 RPM as an example. So 15.9. That means we need to add 22% fuel to that cell block. So 3000 RPM at 100% throttle on the front cylinder, 3000 RPM, 100% throttle. We have a value there of 97. We need to increase that by about 22%. So if we use our delta option, we just increase that to 22. Now that now has changed to 119. Now, of course, it's a naturally aspirated engine but air does have mass so you can actually get a little more than 100 percent of uh, fill in the cylinder anyway the injector now knows that it needs to hold itself open a little bit longer to deliver a little bit more fuel to achieve our target air fuel ratio of 12.9 at that particular rpm and then we do if we make those changes all the way along that graph so we then make another one at three and a half thousand 4,000, 4,500, 5,000. Some of the ones we're gonna you know, do in between here at 2750, you know, 2250. Now, as I said, we make all those adjustments. So we, we rich in this area up, we lean that off, we rich in this up all the way until we get down to here. So we can see that that's now pretty flat as a guide. And you can see we picked up a lot of horsepower there. Was making 123, 135. You can see where there was no fuel here at the start, the torque just dropped off. We put fuel in, that torque is now leveled off. Obviously, there's a lot more involved in that. There's ignition timing we're looking at and a few other different people. There's a lot of other stuff we're looking at today. We're just touching on air fuel ratio and what we're actually monitoring according to that. I hope that has helped you understand a little bit about what's going on when we're talking about the AFR, when we're monitoring on the dyno. There is a lot more involved. In my mind, this video should go for at least an hour to cover exactly what's involved. There's a fair bit in it, but brief surface value, you know, this is what we're doing. We're monitoring the FU ratio, seeing it as a reflection on the graph, making changes to the fuel tables to get that fuel as flat as possible to see the horsepower increase. From there, we obviously, we can adjust ignition timing and ignition timing will change the fuel ratio because the quicker the, well, richer air fuel ratios burn slower and leaner ones burn faster. So we do get heat management comes into it. You know, if, we, if the thing's running a little hot, we might add a little bit more fuel to help cool it down. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on, guys. But as a brief overview, that's what we monitor. That's what we're changing. So if you have had a dyno tune done and the guy says, oh, I had to richen it up a bit, mate. It was a bit lean. And then you think that you can smell the bike running richer. You probably can't. It's probably always smelled like that. The tuner may have only just changed the 100% table uh, when it comes to the power output, he may have even leaned off the idle. So uh, it's one of those things. If you hear someone say I've written it up and then you think you can smell it, it's probably just a little one. It's one of those placebo effects, right? Drop any questions in the comments and I'll get back to them. I want to take this quick opportunity to thank all the members on the channels. You guys are awesome support. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.